Welcome to Lead Talks 2018, February 2017. The first Lead Talks happened in Chennai. July, I think it was July, you can correct me if I'm wrong. 2017, the first Lead Talks happened in Hyderabad. And then this year in February, again in Chennai. And then the fourth Lead Talks, Hyderabad 2018, 14th July, you're here. Congratulations for being here. Lead Talks, by the way, is spreading to other cities. So without much ado, we'll go straight into Lead Talks. 11 speakers, 11 fascinating stories, 11 beautiful ways in which God has just pronounced these three words, purpose, excellence, integrity. The first speaker, she's a true blue Hyderabadi, but she's left her footprint across the globe, really across the globe. She and her husband, Alex, are filmmakers. Now, it's not been easy, not been easy to become a world-class filmmaker. And she has, in her own words, faced discrimination, gender discrimination, racial discrimination, maybe color discrimination. But then, not only has she risen above that by the grace of God, but she says, my motto is to raise an unleashed generation. I want you all to put your hands together and welcome <laughs> Pearl Ganta. Give her a big, rousing welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Over to you. Wow. I've been to over 35 countries, trained several young people in filmmaking, and I produced several documentary films in all these countries. And one thing that people always asked me was, how did you survive in a man's world? <laughs> survive? Man's world? I thought God created this world for all of us and I am part of his creation. So what is this question about survival? And what is this question about man's world? I didn't understand. For me, it was to live my purpose. God created me with a unique purpose. And my name, my name is quite unique too. Pearl. In all those layers, a grain takes a total new transformation, and that's how I am. With all my failures, with all my weakness, God designed me to be an influence for my generation and for the generation to come. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do with my life. I am in no competition with anyone. I'm in a competition with a man. I'm in a competition with a woman or anyone. I am here to live my life and fulfill the destiny and the calling upon my life. It is my desire to raise an unleashed generation, a generation of people who are not afraid to do what God has put in their hearts. It is my purpose to have a relationship with the king. The king who made everything. And it is my purpose to reveal his kingdom to this generation. And this journey started a long time ago. When the first time I read that scripture from Mark 16, 15, it says, go. And I literally went. I was 10 years old when I caught this vision. And this calling of go is for all of us. No matter who we are. And I was 10 years old. And all I knew was we need to preach the word. We need to church, uh, plant a church. That's all I knew. I do humanitarian work, so I did it. I went to every... Um, my go world at that point was Alval. I live in Alval. So I went, knocked on every door. And those days it was okay huh, to knock on every door and pray. People were willing to listen to your prayer. It's different now. But I did. That's all I knew to do. 
And you know what? I was labeled as a crazy person. I had even Christian friends come and tell me, my leaders tell me, you're a girl, behave like one. But I knew my purpose and I was not afraid, not afraid to go and reveal Jesus in my community. And this went on into my teen years. And then again, my, my go phase changed. This was in 1997. I, if you hear those dates, you'll think I'm terribly old, but I'm not. I just started it young. I had an early start. So in 1997, now you'll guess my age, I was 19 years old. And I really wanted to go to the world. And my husband, then he was my pastor, he said, look, I have this opportunity to go to Cambodia. I didn't know where Cambodia was. We had no Google those days. I didn't know anything. And I said, I'll come. He said, but we need to get married. Oh, I was 19. My parents lived in Saudi Arabia. I called them and said, mom, you really need to come. I have to get married. I'll go. And it was the Lent season, OK? And no church wanted to get us married during those days. So we had to pay fine. And I said, we have to go to Cambodia. Again, all my friends, everybody said, you are crazy. You are really out of your mind. But I knew I had to go. And so we got married. Five days of a marriage, we went to Cambodia. That was our orphanage. It got flooded, so we had to go in. Um, on a boat inside the house. But now here I was. All I knew was to plant churches. All I knew was, you know, maybe do an orphanage. And I wanted to preach. Alex, my husband, used to get all the preaching opportunities and I wouldn't. And I said, why can't I preach? He said, you're a woman. And I was so upset with my husband. I said, I came here to Cambodia, I got married early and came here because I wanted to preach. And then he said, aren't you happy for me? I said, no, I'm not, because I want to do it. The radical person in me. But God had his different purpose. He taught me to take care of these little kids, totally unexpected for. I never went looking for things. God brought things into my life. And all I said, God, use me. And while I was taking care of those kids, I had a chance to work on a production. There was a Christian company, they were doing a film there. And fortunately, there were many French-speaking people and Khmer-speaking people, not many English, and I was one of the English crowd. So I helped that crew. And that became my journey in the media world. I loved the film production. I loved all the nitty gritties of um, working in a film. But what I liked the best was when it was broadcast. For the first time in the history of Cambodia, people there began to talk about what hurt them, about the genocide. And there was a lot of healing of the soul that happened. And I was willing to see the change that God was doing. I saw that he was using media to transform and touch people's life. Now, this was a new method. And I was willing to embrace this new method. 20 years now, I'm still doing it. And when I came back to India, I got full on into, now this became my goal, this became my world media. Again, I was called mad, I was called reckless, and a new label, backslidden. They said, you were in the public ministry, you were out there. Now, remember earlier they were not happy with me preaching, and now they're saying me, you, why aren't you preaching, and what are you doing now, behind the cameras? But I knew my purpose. This was my experience in Cambodia. This is a real AK-47 now. 
I totally enjoyed it. But I went on to do. It was not an easy job. When I was in the, uh, with the Christian crew and all that, it was okay. We were able to do like hundreds of TV programs and it was fine. But again, God changed my goal. He changed my world again. In 2002, I launched my production company. And you know what? Nobody was happy with it again. First, you're a girl and you want to start a business and you want to start a production studio. Totally not acceptable. And then again, people said, oh, even the secular crowd, they came and said, Madam, you need to know somebody in the pol politics, in the political world, or you need to know, you know, have good muscle power. No muscle power, no politics, no money also in my pocket. But we said, no, God told us to do this, I'm going to do it. We set up a production company. And you won't believe the people who walked into that place, they said, there's something different about, the, about you. There's something different about this place. We carry God's anointing. And I still remember, uh, we were doing a production and um, I had to hire, now I didn't have a Christian crew, I have to hire people from Tollywood. So my cameraman was from Tollywood <laughs> and he came. And I was all ready with my shots. We were doing a TV series, not a Christian TV series, uh, but more of a social one. And I spoke to him. I gave him all the directions. He just would not listen to me. I said, Are Babre, I, you know, I, I am skilled in this. I work hard. I studied. And guys, I know what I'm doing. But he just wouldn't listen to me. So I had to hire another director, male director, speak to him. Tell him, look, I want the shot this way. He would go and tell the cameraman, and he did it. I was so hurt. I remember it was late night. I was standing in Jubilee Hills bus stop, waiting for an otter to go home, and I was crying. I said, God, why do you want me to do this? Am I supposed to be doing this? Am I really that crazy and mad person? But I understood my purpose. I said, I won't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit when you're doing something. Don't quit when you're following God's purpose for your life. Because he'll make a way when there is no way. Be consistent. And that's what I did. I pulled myself up and I said, no, we're going to do this. It's consistent. And over the years, they've come to respect me. And now they are, they're willing to take my direction now. Now, there's a lot of conception about media world, and there are indeed there are a lot of bad things. <laughs> I still remember um, in the first few days, I had people come over. My cameraman would have alcohol in his pocket. I was like, I'm not used to that kind of stuff. He'd come drunk. I said, Are you here? We have to shoot. What are you doing? He said, this is common practice. Having relationships, being rude, smoking, it was common. But I said, look, if you're working with me, there's something called integrity here, okay? We are not doing certain things. They were not happy. Some of them quit. Some of them didn't want to work with me. I said, never mind. But now they know. If they're working with Miss Pearl, these are the rules, and they're okay with it. But I was consistent with my integrity, with what I wanted to do, and they saw it over time. Take a stand. Maybe difficult, but take a stand. I was in um, some villages in Rajasthan. A Christian pastor, he looked at me, and he said, I'm like, huh? what happened? <laughs> this is a dangerous place. We cannot work with a girl. My male friends had to intervene many times to rescue me. There were times we were attacked with swords. There were times we were chased out by witch doctors. There were times where um, I, 
we face all kinds of, so being a documentary filmmaker is very challenging because we are out there in the public. But God protected us just because we were willing to do what he called us. And I told my crew, listen, if you're working with me, it's going to be a little different because we carry the presence of God. And I, and I know there are situations where, you know, we had to just stop filming, pray for people, and then carry on with our work. We cannot separate our spiritual life with our uh, professional life. We just can't. It is part of us. It is who we are. These are some of my predictions. Then my other goal happened when um, I was challenged in 2008. Some of my team, they're here. They were trained with us in media. And it was my desire to train young people. And 2008 was a journey. And God took me to all these countries where we trained youngsters, trained cha cha children to use filmmaking as a discipleship tool. And these are the kids who train all over Africa, South America, Asia, North America. They got trained. Teenagers having their own production homes, raising their own money to go to college. And in all that, they haven't forgotten their call to serve. And they constantly disciple. As they're discipling, they have been discipled by someone else. And they are not afraid. They are an unleashed generation. They are willing to fulfill their promise, their purpose, and their commitment to the king and his kingdom. What is your goal? What is your world? Is it your family? Is it your workplace? Is it your community? Or is it your children? Are you willing to take a stand? Are you willing to be bold? Are you willing to take the risk? Are you willing to be labeled as mad and crazy and reckless? If that's what it takes to do what God has called you to do, there are people out there waiting for you. Only you can do what you can do because it is your area of influence and God has placed you strategically there. Will you go? Walk with someone today. I've chosen to do that the last few years. Walk with my media friends. Help them. We have answered all kinds of questions. People talk to me. They ask me, Akka, everybody is into living relationships these days. Is it okay? We sit and talk. We counsel each other. And we walk. And we use this tool as media. Something that was so obscene now is the in thing. Those very friends who told me, you know, you're backslidden because you're behind cameras now. Their children are studying journalism and communication, and they told me, you know, you are their role model. It may sound crazy. The ideas you have today may sound crazy. But over the years, it'll be a tool that others can use. How are you preparing, and what are you leaving for the generation after you? This has been my prayer, and may it be your prayer as well. Whom shall I send? Who will go? And I always say, Lord, here I am. Send me. He will empower us. He will equip us. He will give us the needed skills that we, um, uh, to get the job done. If you're only willing to put your faith and your trust in him. Thank you.